Talking about big birds and big things, you had the largest hornbill, now you've got the largest bird in the world, and behind it you've got the tallest mammal in the world as well. It's a lot of firsts here today. This is the ostrich and female ostrich. they the browner of the two, mainly because they look after the eggs during the day, whereas the black male looks after the eggs at night time. If we pan across here, if I could ask you, Zana, we've got a giraffe drinking at that pan. We'll come back to these ostriches now. It's quite rare to see uh, quite rare to see giraffe drink in the open, which gives us a an insight into how they use that or how how they get over the fact that their head is so far away from the ground. It's not easy for giraffe to do what they're doing. Have a look there, legs splayed. They've got a very typical uncomfortable look to drinking. Isn't that incredible? Now to stop all the blood in their body from rushing into their head and popping their eyeballs out of their skull, they've got a net, a fine net of capillaries just behind the, where their ears are, which forms a very effective trap for blood. So it keeps their blood pressure steady in their head by allowing only one platelet through at a time. Allowing thus allowing that giraffe to get down in that very typical gait. So they'll suck up some water and then a very flick when they're done. It's also quite typical. I'll flick up and the water will get to get ready with your screenshots at the flick. And it'll flick now. You'll get hopefully the water in the sunlight streaming in an arc in front of the giraffe. There we go. Here with that little flick. Hopefully you're quick enough to get that. A lot of animals around this plain in actual fact. See if this giraffe is still thirsty. Still thirsty. This will give you another opportunity to get that flick if you missed out if you missed out on that one. Now Andrea, you'd like to know how tall giraffes get. These Maasai giraffe, which are different to the common giraffe that Tristan would be able to show you from Juma, don't get as tall, but the tallest of them gets to about five and a half meters, which is about fifteen feet, sixteen feet. There we go, and that flick in there. The 15 or 16 feet into the air, uh, Andrea, which is about as high as what an elephant can reach without standing on its back legs and, uh, and obviously pushing a tree down. So they can reach uh, and the flick. Uh, what is quite interesting to see is these Maasai giraffe flick at the end of their drink. In other words, when they lift their heads up. Watch over the next couple of months and years and we'll show you a common giraffe out of Juma. And they always flick as they come up. They don't flick at the end. Which is an observation I didn't know until right now. Let's see this again. Flick, flick, there we go. How bizarre. And that was exactly four times that it did it. So that is the Maasai giraffe doing that. It'd be interesting to see if other giraffe do the same thing or whether they're a little bit more common. In other words, flick as they as they finish drinking rather than right at the end of their of their of the journey back up into the sky. Oh, a lot of giraffe. One thing about these Maasai giraffe is that uh, oh, there's some warthog on the right hand side and a topi standing on top of a termite mound. The sort of quintessential picture from the Maasai Mara is these topi that enjoy standing on top of termite mounds. Not quite sure why, but they always do. It doesn't look like they're vigilant. Although Brent was busy telling me that quite often he's found cheetah just by following around these topi who are very vigilant on top of these termite mounds. And show him it. Where the cheetah are. It's a fairly large warthog that as well. A bird flying towards you. There's a dove. A lot of things around here at the moment. There's a marsh in the distance. So the, the little river that runs next to our camp empties out into that marsh. That you're looking at there now. It's where the green grass is. And there you can see all the animals that are on that marsh. That's the last of the greenest grass. Those are all zebra. And then the tree line is where 
the Mara River runs through. And on the other side of that, in the next couple of days, I'm hoping to see the hills turn black with wildebeest. The wildebeest are just on the other side of that hill. We want to know where the migration is, where the head of the migration is, just on the other side there. Christine in Texas, you'd like to know why the Mara trees are flat-topped. I presume you mean at the bottom, that thicket that you've got on the left-hand side there is, is, uh, is, is testimony to that. I presume you mean that they've got a browsing line like you see there now. Uh, that is just quite simply giraffe. So giraffe and elephant would feed up into that canopy and where they can't reach anymore is where the leaves stop. And that is a favorite of these Maasai giraffe. And if we pan around any thicket, you will see a similar browse line appear in almost every one of these thickets is that is giraffes where they're stopping where they where they where they can't reach anymore that is where the leaves and the branches start you see this thicket that's coming into view now on the right hand side another brilliant example of feeding pressure on these uh, on these trees not all trees just tends to be a select few. They quite enjoy the Warburgia here. I was told that they almost exclusively feed on that, which is those trees that you see there. I was also quite amazed the first time I came into the Mara and saw these bare trees at the bottom with these very distinct browse lines until a friend called Patrick, who works out of Little Governor's Camp, told me that that's just the giraffe. Here we've got some more giraffe drinking over here now. Another giraffe, not the same one. Let's see if they give the flick at the terminal end of their rise into the air. They drink and then flick at the end. Let's see if the one at the back there does the same thing. Or if it's just this funny giraffe. Nice big mouthful of water. And flick. Yeah, that is more like it. See that flick as they came up. A good drink, eh? Let's see that one at the back if it repeats it again. I think giraffe have to be one of the most bizarre animals on the face of the planet. How could you ever explain that to someone who's never seen a giraffe before? Let's see what happens now. And there we go. All right, so it seems uh, also at the end there, so I'm still undecided at the moment. Uh, the problems that we have out here in the Mara Triangle, trying to decide whether a giraffe flicks its face before it, before it finishes its rise or after. Stacey, you wanted to know if uh, it's true whether the giraffe have no vocal box, a vocal uh, voice box, and if they don't make any sounds. They, they do have a voice box, Stacey. They do make sounds. They just don't make sounds very often. So it is a, um, it's a bit of a, it's, it's a, it's a myth out, out there in the world that giraffe don't make any sound or have no voice box, but I've definitely heard giraffe making noises before it's generally only when they're highly disturbed they make a growling noise and then they also hum as well when they sleep and they definitely have a voice box they're just not very talkative giraffe busy looking at things over here quite know what they're looking at. They've got such a massive vantage point over any, anything else out here. They can see almost everything in the grasslands in front of them. Ah, Sammy Jane, you wanted to know if female giraffe fight. They don't fight each other, Sammy Jane. What they do do is fight things that want to hurt their babies. And I've seen female giraffe fight lion, fight leopard, fight jackal, 
uh, fight wild dog, fight hyena. I wouldn't like to get in the way of a mother giraffe protecting her baby, that's for sure. The, those hooves that you see there in the front and those massive, the massive leverage that they have on those back legs make for formidable weapons. They trample with their front hooves and they kick with their back legs and can kick a lion in a full somersault. They can kick easily a 500 pound lion into a full somersault with one, one of those back kicks. They got the hardest kick in the animal kingdom. I definitely don't want to get onto the wrong side of a mother giraffe protecting her babies. But no, they don't fight one another in that classic necking that you see male or bull giraffes do where they stand side on and they whack each other with their heads using their long necks as leverage and those horns as uh, you know knuckles, brass knuckles to add force to it. They can knock each other off their feet. In actual fact, that's the objective of it is to down an opponent so that a male giraffe can stand over one, domineering it. And it's uh, the most submissive posture that a giraffe can be in, is on its side, off its feet. And one that male giraffe try and force each other into. Oh, nice view.